Good evening, I'm Rosanna Scotto. John's off tonight. Mario Bosquez joins me. Well, Rosanna, there's another story that's still developing right now. It's the mystery death of the infant daughter of a French-Canadian couple who first reported her missing in Central Park. Some are wondering if they eventually might avoid charges. Jeff Weiser is at the 20th Precinct on the west side with the latest. Jeff, what do you have? Oh, Mario, it is indeed possible that the couple could avoid charges. In fact, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office today did, in fact, decide to drop charges of falsifying a report. But that Canadian couple may face charges in Canada. In fact, they've been here all day long at the 20th Precinct. There have been a couple of detectives from Canada questioning that Canadian couple all day and all night long. Tonight, there's still a cloud over this French-Canadian couple who came to New York City this weekend under tragic circumstances. They may leave in hot water with the law. They've lost custody of their four-year-old daughter who was taken to Canada and is being cared for by the Youth Protection Agency. And when they return home, it may be in police custody. Joseph Bales and his wife, Helene LeMay, say their 10-week-old daughter died in her crib at their home just outside of Quebec. They panicked. Then the couple admits to dumping the infant under four feet of snow, not too far from their home. A few days later, they drove into Manhattan and then concocted a hoax, telling police she was missing. That led New York City police on a massive search of Central Park. But after questioning, the couple broke down and tearfully told the truth. Apparently, they got rid of the baby's body because of another incident last fall. At that time, they lost custody of a three-year-old foster son who they left in a locked car with the windows rolled up. Tonight, an autopsy in Canada reveals no signs of abuse on the body of their daughter, and the disposition of the legal case against them remains unclear. In fact, that autopsy report could not determine the exact cause of death. There's no sign of trauma and no sign of strangulation, so what we have right now is a mystery. Reporting live from the 20th Precinct on Manhattan's west side, this is Jeff Weiser, Fox News. Mario and Rosanna, back to you. Thank you very much, Jeff, for that report tonight. A Bronx mother is charged with leaving her young children by themselves. 20-year-old Jennifer Roldan is accused of abandoning her toddlers, a three-year-old boy and a one-and-a-half-year-old girl. Yesterday, police checked out a report that children had been crying in the Bronx apartment for three hours. Cops say they found the little ones hungry and the place a mess. The mother showed up at the 48th precinct last night and was arrested. The children are with welfare officials. The police commissioner has a message so strong it may burn itself into TV screens at station houses all over town. Penny Crone takes an exclusive look at the new step in the fight to root out crooked cops. But as your police commissioner, I am here to tell you that there can be no excuses for turning the shield of protection into a weapon of robbery and intimidation. In the next few days, every cop in New York City will be getting this message from their boss. The substantial corruption found in the 3 precinct presents the department with a number of serious questions. Why did so many officers apparently become criminals? There may be at least two answers. Cops sometimes become criminals out of greed or out of frustration. Greed for some of the large amounts of money involved in the drug trade. Or frustration with the sense that police are making no progress against crime. While I understand both reasons, I cannot and will not condone either. This videotape message is being distributed to every precinct in the city. It comes after last week's arrests of the so-called Dirty Dozen. In this police department video, obtained exclusively by Fox News, Bratton tells the men and women of the NYPD to break the blue wall and report all corruption. We have shown you that we will permit no unnecessary limitation on your enforcement authority. But now, I ask that you trust us that you step forward and use that enforcement authority to root out corruption in the ranks of this department. It seemed like business as usual here at the 30th Precinct in Harlem today, but it was far from that. Twenty new police officers reported to the precinct. They're taking the places of the 12 officers who were arrested on corruption charges. Uh, my superiors in uh, one police plaza took a good look at the people coming in here to make sure that uh, we had uh, assertive, uh, solid, enthusiastic new people. When the night shift cops arrived, their roll call was extended. Commissioner Bratton was on hand and had somewhat of a shocking offer. Anybody that wants a transfer out of the 3-0, that we will honor that, but encouraging them to stay on board. There's going to be a lot of good things happening up here. And the commissioner describes morale here at the precinct as somber, but he says he's optimistic in the months to come it will definitely improve. He also says they plan on renovating this precinct to make everything bright and new. Reporting from Harlem, I'm Penny Crone, Fox News.
And what about police morale? Starting with last summer's Mullen Commission hearings, then on an up note with the election of a police supported mayor, then this latest scandal making morale a roller coaster ride. The average police officer in the city <clears throat> apparently has low self esteem for various reasons. There's a, there's a great deal of disillusionment with these, the criminal justice system. They think it's a joke. They really don't have any faith and trust in what goes on after they make an arrest. Phil Caruso went on to say only 1% of cops are bad, and that is unfortunately affecting the morale of the good ones. The 73rd precinct is shadowed by the cancer of corruption as well. Officers Keith Goodman, Richard Sanfilippo, and Frank Mastretta are among those accused in the so-called morgue boys gang, cops accused of drug dealer rip-off scams in Brooklyn. They allegedly met in a coffin factory to split their loot. The officers pleaded not guilty in court today. A trial date was set for October 3rd. News that the teenager acquitted of the murder of Yankel Rosenbaum is in trouble again, this time in Georgia, is raising the hopes of Brooklyn DA Charles Hines. He's hoping Lemrick Nelson could face federal charges. It may very well be a, a, a prosecution of Lemrick Nelson for civil rights violations, something I've called a, a for, for almost two years, so I'm, I'm very optimistic tonight. Nelson faces grand jury action on charges he assaulted a classmate, but he now denies bragging about the Rosenbaum murder. The number of New Yorkers killed by gunfire this year has reached 279. The latest, a man found shot to death on a street in the Soundview section of the Bronx. So far, no arrests.